Hey everybody, Chris here from It's Mead Made, and today is going to be an amazing video. So this video is a little bit long, but I go through so many cool tips and tricks that I have never put on any of my videos, because I am painting a Deadpool on a Vespa. This chibi is from 3DXM. It's on his Patreon this month, and I'll go ahead and put a link to that in the description below. But my wife saw me downloading this and she's like, are you going to print that? And I was like, I don't know, I might. And she's like, no, 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 you're going to print that. And I'm like, oh, I guess I'm going to print that. And she's like, yes, I want that. I want that on my desk. And she cleared a spot and like just kind of gestured towards it. And I was like, okay. So she gave me one requirement. She wanted this thing to look battle damaged. She said, Deadpool should look like he came out of a war zone on this Vespa. So I told her that I could meet those requirements. So I'm gonna quit talking and let's just hurry up and get to this video. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and take my secret weapon, which is just plain old silly putty. I love this stuff for masking. So I just take a little bit and knead it and then cover up all of the pegs and connection points. And this works really well because it you can just put it down a lot faster than just using masking tape. And it peels off super easy, which you will see in a few minutes. Then I start in on my prime coat and I'm just using Vallejo surface primer for everything and I just go to town all over it and get a nice coat. Once I've got that, then I go for the black on the guns and then I'm doing just the eyes. I'm not concerned with anything else, but I wanna get a really nice clean coverage on those eyeballs. So now I'm gonna take my Liquitex acrylic white ink and just put a few drops directly into the airbrush and I am trying to get some nice highlighting and gradation on the eyes. Now for this other eye, I'm just gonna do it real time so you can see how slow of a process this really is. You just build up a little bit at a time. Don't try to do the entire thing in one pass. So I'm basically just going in circles and watching where my control is going, keeping my pressure at the same uh, trigger point and holding it down and just moving it in circles, not keeping it in one spot. I keep moving. It's subtle, but it's moving, and that gives a really nice feathering effect. If you hold it in one spot, you can get kind of a spatter and a really dark spot. So just takes a little bit of practice, but you can see the results. So now I'm gonna take this Tuscan Red, and mix that in my airbrush with some thinner, and this is gonna be my base coat for Deadpool's suit. And I'm trying not to just cover the whole model since there's other areas that's going to be black. So then I actually took some of that putty and covered up his eyes, if you can't see that, just to protect those irises that I've already painted. Now I'm just gonna take some medium gray, and I'm just spraying all of this like dust or smoke. Now I'm taking some acrylic white ink, and I'm just giving it some highlighting. So you can see how it's highlighted on the edges with the white. And then I actually take some black ink and go ahead and highlight some of the shadows. I guess highlight's not the right word for it, but I darken it. Then I'm taking this Adrift acrylic paint from Folk Art. And this is gonna be the color of that Vespa. I really wanted a classic looking color. Now this is a flat, color so later on I'm going to put a gloss coat on it so now the red I'm going to be using this flamenco red from apple barrel and I'm just going to go ahead add some thinner and add it into my airbrush 
Now, what I'm going to be doing is I'm only hitting this from the top because I'm adding the highlighting now. I don't want to add a lot of highlighting, so I'm just gradually stepping up in color gradation. So this is just a little bit brighter, and when it dries, you can see a little bit of a lighter tone. Now I have this berry red, and just putting that into my airbrush, and this one is very bright. So I'm hitting that only from the very top of the head and just a little bit on the legs and I'm not really angling it around. So I'm just on the top of the arms and shoulders and that is it. So if you see how dark it is on the bottom and then when I flip it over and how bright it is on the top. So that will give me enough of the shading that I need. And also the paint, when it dries, it will darken just a little bit. All right, so now I have everything airbrushed and all of our main coats are done. I've got the Vespa all painted and then I have the cloud of smoke done. I have these painted black with the guns and things because I'm gonna do some cool stuff with that. Then I've left these with just our primer coat because these are gonna be uh, other colors. Then what I have is our body is completely painted with the red. The black is gonna be have to be painted by hand. And then obviously I have the head done. So the next thing I have to do is I am going to take off all of this silly putty that I used for masking. And as you can see, it did its job. So right now, that's all I'm gonna do is just take off all the Silly Putty. And the great thing about Silly Putty, when you're using it for masking, it literally comes off like flawlessly. And as you can see, it masks everything beautifully. So it doesn't work in every situation, but the ones that it does, it is absolutely fantastic. And the reason why I put them on all of these pegs is so I still have a really good fit. And the reason why I did that is because in these specific pegs and things like that, when you're painting, you can actually build up layers. Like they'll just start stacking on each other and then you do not have the good tolerances as you once did and they don't fit as perfectly as they did. So you see that this still fits beautifully. So that is the reason why you wanna use Silly Putty sometimes. And when you're done with your Silly Putty, all you gotta do is knead it and it will somewhat clean itself. It'll be a little dirty, but for the most part, it will be like new for you to use again. You will find like big flakes of paint and you just kinda take those out as you need it and they kinda almost fall out when you're really doing it. So it's a good thing to just kind of knead it for, you know, a minute or two. That way you can see any of the big pieces and get those out. And that's really it. So Silly Putty, it's an amazing little tool. So the first thing I'm gonna take care of is this base. So I've got all of the smoke and dust kind of done and airbrushed to give some really good textures and definition to it. Uh, just using a gray and I used that white ink and black ink to really get some good definitions and kind of custom do it. Now I'm going to paint the rest of it because what I want to do is I want to start with my base and then I'm going to work up. That way I have, when I'm done with the head, I have a completed model. So that way we'll do this, then we'll move on to the Vespa, and then we'll move on to Deadpool himself. All right, so I'm gonna move all this stuff out of the way and get started on this. So the first, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna take this wrought iron and paint all of the asphalt, and then we'll move on to the yellow strips in the road. Okay, so I'm gonna use a bigger brush to actually get started, and then I'll get a finer detail brush to get near those edges. So I have my wrought iron all done and it is painted on here with a few different coats. 
but it is a really, really dark gray, not a black. So I'm actually going to do some dry brushing with this black and to give it a little more definition and realism because right now it's just, it is rough, but it's kind of cartoony and we might do something else to have some fun with this. All right, so I got a little black paint on my texture board and I'm just going to get some paint. All right, so now I'm just gonna get a little paint on my dry brush get that off test it good and I'm just going to lightly just texture this up a bit so like I do from time to time I made a mistake and what I don't like is the darkness of it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in the exact opposite direction and add in a lighter gray on here instead of a dark. So I'm going to go ahead and add this silver marlin and I'm going to get more of a focused dry brush. And one thing I like to do on these kind of models is I like to accentuate the lines and I kind of dry brush the edges to really just make them pop because it is a cartoony kind of thing and I want them to be really highlighted just to show that cut off. And there we go. I actually really like that a lot. And now I'm going to get some titanium white and paint over these yellow strips. And I'm laying down a white coat because that just helps with yellow. Because yellow is very difficult to paint with because it takes like 100 layers because of the amount of pigment in it. So doing a white coat before you throw down some yellow always helps you out. And I'm just going pretty close to the edge, but not going right up to the edge because I want the yellow to be right up to the edge. And I don't want to have any white showing. So now I'm going to be using this school bus yellow and this definitely seems like the kind of paint on the roads because of its vibrancy. So I have everything almost completely done. I have one little rock here that I want to paint brown and I've got to do the tire. But if you've seen any of my videos where I have bases on things, I always have to do something else. And I just like to add a little flair and it gives it just a little bit of oomph if that's a thing but what i was thinking for this is i was thinking about making some of the street maybe wet and i was going to use some of this vallejo water texture and what you basically do with this stuff is you just kind of pour it in a certain area and it will flow into those cracks and when it dries it has that gloss look of water and since there's some dips right here, I think this is the best area to have like just a little bit of it. And what I need to do is I'm also going to have this little skewer pick to kind of guide it in those areas. Another thing about this is you, when I lay this down, I am going to essentially leave this part of the project for about a day because you need to let it set up fully. And and the other thing is, is I'm also going to have to cover this up because just the dust in the air can really mess this stuff up. So I'm going to go ahead and just take this off and I'm going to just, this stuff flows like crazy. So I'm going to just drip a little bit in here in these areas and just let it start flowing where it needs to go.
and all I'm doing is just angling this and at this point I'm going to go ahead and kind of guide it in the cracks here to be able to start flowing that way guide it here and just a little bit more And then there's another little dip right here that I'll put a, just a few drops and maybe connect it. And just using this toothpick to kind of just guide it a bit. And then I will put a few drops over here too to just kind of bring it together. All right, now I don't want to overdo it. That makes it look like it just rained maybe or you know it's wet from something but so the key to this is I just don't want to overdo it so I've got some nice water spots there and now I'm just going to get essentially a Tupperware container and just cover it and I'll come back to this tomorrow okay so now the water is done and I think it looks really cool and the next thing I have to do is the tire. And all I'm going to be using is just this pure black. And I'm gonna paint that really well. Also, I'm going to be doing like, I guess the hubcap right there because ultimately I'm going to be covering it in a silver. So uh, I wanna have that black base for that silver. Okay, so here we go. So now it's time to make this Vespa look like a car. So I'm using this clear gloss from Rust-Oleum and it's the 2X Ultra Cover. And this is going to really give me that shiny car look on this matte paint. So I am first just dusting it and really just trying to get it covered everywhere. And then this does take me about two coats to do. The big thing here is you just want to do short little bursts and make sure you cover everything. And when you're doing a clear coat, you absolutely want to make sure that it doesn't touch anything. Like if your finger touches it, you're going to mess with that clear, shiny look. So I'm very careful of how I'm actually spraying this and how I'm holding it. And I'm using my paint clips to make sure I actually can set it somewhere so it dries and nothing is touching it whatsoever. Okay, so the next part is I'm going to be taking some Rub and Buff Metallic Silver Leaf and I put a little bit on the edge, on the side and the bottom, just because I wanna have a little more control over this. And I am going to be focusing on the gun, but if I get it on the hand, it's not that big of a deal. Okay, so there are my guns, and they are good to go. So I'm going to let this dry for a while, and then I'm going to repaint the actual hands. So set that aside. So this is the next part. I need to make this thing beat up. And now that I've gotten a lot of the rub and buff off, I am going to kind of start beating up some of the edges and seeing how this goes. And basically I'm just rubbing some of these edges. Okay, so there is a little beat up right there. And I don't want to do too much on it, but I do realize that probably the edges would be messed up quite a bit. Okay, so now the next step is the actual seat. 
And I'm going to be using this camel tan-ish color, but it's a multi-surface, so it'll give me a little bit of a sheen to it. All right, next is I'm going to take that same black for the tires and I'm going to do the spokes here and also the tire. So once I get everything painted in black that I need to, I jump over to the hands and touch those up where the rub and buff got on. And then the seat was dry, so I also went back and did another coat of that. All right, now I'm going to use some flag red for the back brake light. So you notice in this video, I'm jumping back and forth a lot. So I was done with the red and jumped back over to the black since my paint was still wet. All right, now that I've got this black, I just don't want to waste it. I was going to wait to jump over to the Deadpool parts and pieces, but it's black and I've got black here. So I'm going to go ahead and start painting this. So I'm going to go ahead and start painting Deadpool's mask and also the striping. I'm going to try to hand paint it and see how well I can get it. So if you notice that this black coat, the first one I put down, is very thin because I'm using a lot of water in this because I don't want to see any brush strokes and that's the key here. I'm just using very thin coats of watered down black paint. All right, so first, my first layer of brown that I'm putting down is real brown for the belt. Okay, so now I'm going to take this plate mail metal from the Army Painter and I am going to start painting the rims right here, the spokes of the bike, and I'm also going to get the bumper with this as well as the rim right here on the tire on the base. So here we go. All right, so now I'm going to dry brush these pouches to make them look more leather-like, and I'm going to use honeycomb from Folk Art. And I'm just gonna put a little on my board and start the dry brushing. And the key to when you're doing leather is, especially when the dry brushing, only get a little bit on your brush because you want this to be very subtle on the edges to get that worn look. And I'm using a very small dry brush. So you can see it just gives a kind of a subtle worn look and even on the pouches here.
So I went ahead and painted the belt buckle here a nice silver, and now I'm just gonna paint it in with a black. And of course I need my glasses for this. All right, so I'm gonna use this angel green for these little grenades, like smoke grenades or flash grenades back here. Okay, for the sheaths, I'm gonna go ahead and paint them this steel gray from Full Cart. Now I'm going to take this plate mail metal from the Army Painters and I'm going to go ahead and spray the handlebars everything I want silver. Now I got the steering done. It's all airbrushed in the same metallic color as the spokes and the rims of the Vespa. And now what I'm going to do is in this little mirror, instead of making it silver, I want to go still a little more cartoony on this. And I'm going to fill it with this gloss light blue from Apple Barrel. And the big key here is I'm going to water this down quite a bit. So I watered this down quite a bit to where you can see it's dripping because I am going to let this sit inside here and just kind of fill that in. And there we go. Now I'm not going to mess with this until that fully dries. So while that's drying, I am going to move on to the next part. And this is where I'm really going to make this battle damaged. Since I'm making this whole thing for my wife and she requested it looks like he is battle worn, I'm also going to make the Vespa battle worn. So I'm going to do something a little different and this could turn out amazing and it could also be just completely nuts and terrible. But I'm going to do this. I'm going to drill bullet holes into the Vespa. So I'm going to take my drill and I am literally going to just put uh, like one or two holes. I think I'm gonna put two here and then like maybe one right here in the front. <sighs> Fingers crossed because I don't know if this is gonna turn out good. All right, here we go. So the first thing I'm going to do is make sure my placement. And I think right here looks good. Okay, there's our first bullet hole. Now the second one I'm gonna put right here. All right, now I think I'm gonna put one over here. All right, my beautiful paint job. Uh, and I think, no, I think that's good. Kinda wanted to do another one. Maybe we can do one back here. How about that? And that one went all the way through. <laughs> that's more hollow and that's all right. I'm perfectly fine with that. And let's see, where else? Where else can we put a bullet hole? I'm not afraid anymore. It looks good. Uh, since he's riding into battle, let's make one right here. There we go. Okay. Man. All right, so now I've got the battle damage. All right, so the next step is it's time to glue this up because I am going to start weathering this. And what I'm gonna be using is this Gorilla Glue Super Glue Gel. All right, so I have my weathering pigment that I'm going to be using for this. And I'm just using a makeup brush. So I'm gonna get it on and I'm going to start weathering this in different areas. especially around the bullet holes. Uh, 
There we go. That is very worn now. For the tires is I'm going to get those worn as well. So we match here and they both don't look absolutely perfect. And there we go. Just a slight bit of brown on it. And now my desk is a complete mess. So now we are ready to start gluing at least our base together. And put some glue here on the sides and a little on the tires. And there we go. Now just gotta put it right on. And there we go. <laughs> it's looking pretty awesome. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, Deadpool is pretty much done, so I'm going to glue him together as well. And then I'm going to start doing some weathering effects on him. And I'm not going to be using weathering pigments for him. I just wanted to use it for the bike. And same thing, just going to put a little bit of glue on here. Now for the head. Just want to make sure we already have a good fit here. And we do. I am not adding the hands yet. Um, I'm going to first do a dry brush on him to dirty him up because his Vespa has been through a battle and so has he. So I'm going to go ahead and get some pure black, squirt it on my palette here, and I'm going to get a very soft dry brush and get it on my brush. And for this, I am making sure I get almost everything off of this. So when I do this, I don't want to really see anything. And there we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and start lightly dusting some grit on him. And this is very, very, very subtle. Now the one thing I will say, this is just like the eyes, just a little bit over and over and then it'll start to darken. Don't do too much at once or it won't look natural. It'll just get some big blobs on it. And there we go. So you can see now he is a little gritty in places. And that was the specifications from my wife. He, she wanted him to be battle worn. Looks like he's gone through some stuff. And man, it looks like he has. All right, so the last thing I've got is essentially this piece and the model is done. So we're gonna go ahead and I gotta paint this yellow and then I got to do the handlebar grips. Uh, and I'm going to do that in probably a brown. And I'm going to use this podge yellow. One thing I will say, I actually went ahead and got a separate water dish. When you're dealing with yellow, it is really good to be able to have a separate water for it because I was getting my brush wet and then going back to the paint. It's amazing with just a little bit of a dirty water can contaminate your yellow and it will not look right. So just a nice little tip for you. Okay, so now I'm ready. While that's drying, I am going to go ahead and glue on the hands. And 
And there we go. I would call him done. So I'm gonna go ahead and set him to the side. Next, we just need to wrap up this. So this is almost done. Uh, the one thing I will say, and I didn't mention this while I was doing it, the one thing about gloss paints, if you put them on too thick and rapidly cool them, let me see if I can get in focus, they will start to crack. And if you can see that, and I was actually going for that because I want to break this mirror. So I'm actually going to get some of my black paint and drop it in those cracks to make it look like the mirror got cracked. Because Deadpool really just doesn't take care of things. So I've got some extremely, extremely watered down black paint. And all I'm going to do is drop it here in the cracks and just let it flow. And there we go. So that is a cracked mirror. Okay, the last thing I have to do is just paint these handlebars and we are done. And I'm gonna paint these handlebars a burnt umber, so it's gonna be a little darker of a brown than we've been using. Okay, one last thing that I'm going to do that I'm kind of dumb and I glued it together without even thinking is I am going to take this Micron pen and write on the license plate. And I am not the best, so I did my best. Okay, last thing. Uh, we got this all dry and done. Now I'm just going to go ahead and glue this right on here. Now that it's completely done, I'm going to do a clear coat on this, and then I'm also going to do a clear coat on this one, but I'm not going to glue them together yet. I will do that actually later, but we are ready for the final reveal. So this was an absolutely beautiful model. 3DXM just, I mean, he did an amazing job. But the paint job, I mean, it just took it over the top. I cannot be more happy with how this turned out. And my wife, I mean, she was ecstatic. She was so excited to get it, and it met all of her specifications. He was battle damaged, and it looked like he just drove through a war zone. And this model was so much fun to paint. I don't know, I, I've said it a hundred times, but I just love painting chibis, and they're, they just make me smile. <laughs> But I hope you were able to pull out a few tips and tricks on how to do some of these techniques. So if you have liked what you've seen today, please feel free to hit that subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment below. Tell me what you think. Other than that, I hope you guys have a great day and I will see you all in the next video. It's right there. Click it.